On his first ever forest rally after graduating from the Ecos Juniors, Andy Struthers was in for a tough day of learning in his borrowed Citroen C2. With experienced co-driver Pete Wheel alongside, the 17-year-old managed to make the finish and score a Class 1 win. It's uh, been really enjoyable, yeah. It was, uh, it was quite hard at the start, not what I was used to, but we slowly improved and then uh, started to bond together and got used to the car and surface, so it was better near the end, but really enjoyable. And what were the stages like? Uh, all but the last one were very tough. The last one was great fun. The first one as well, but uh, it was a shame to miss out the 12 miles, but nothing you could really do, but enjoyable. Neil Cowan Jr. was competing in his first event as a registered SRC competitor. The MG was running well until an argument with a rock and SS4 forced his retirement. After taking the class win on the snowman, Thomas Gray had made the long trip south for the border. Despite feeling that the underpowered Yaris would struggle against the more powerful cars, he managed to grab second in class 2 at the finish, despite almost hitting a bridge while completely sideways. Over two minutes up on the Yaris, Ryan Weston and Kirsty Riddick took the class win in the Proton Satria, an impressive 28th overall after an up and down day, at least by Weston's standards. So congratulations you two on your class win today, how's it been for you? Uh, today's been really good, um, really enjoyed myself. And What were the stages like for you? Uh, this, today the stages were quite slippy but I managed to get through them all. And uh, I've been it to the finish. So. You said the last stage was your favourite. Why was that? I don't know. I just came off the start line and I was just happy and I was ready to go and it was good. And what about you, Kirsty? Everything went well? Yeah, it's been a really good day and so we had a disappointing snowman but we've uh, come here and we've done quite well. So really good to Ryan. Andy Chammers and Martin McCabe had a difficult day in Class 3, a low seeding meant they spent the day catching cars until they retired on SS4. Donald and Scott Peacock were tied for the class lead heading for the final stage, but were forced to retire with a sick engine. Tariq Fazal gave new co-driver Amanda Burney a good debut with a finish, Tariq's first in quite a while. On his first event, David Hunter had his experienced brother Scott in the passenger seat. Thankfully there were no family fallouts and they took an encouraging fourth in class at the finish. After being allowed out to play in his dad's escort a couple of years ago, Douglas Cameron was out for the first time in his own 205. The transition from co-driver to driver went relatively smoothly, despite the exhaust falling off in the final stage. After buying the car on the Friday before the event, Stephen Belshaw was happy with second in class after retiring on the snowman. The new car did fight back with a fire on SS1 and a blocked fuel line on SS3. After taking second in class on the snowman, Simon Hay went one better to take maximum points this time out. His analysis of the road conditions was also very good. Apparently the slippy bits were slippy. Reigning class champions Greg and Chris McKnight once again set the early class 4 and leading two wheel drive pace. Unfortunately it all went wrong once again when the engine lost all its oil on SS4. Also retiring, Jordan Black was running well in the C2 until a brake caliper sheared, jamming the wheel and snapping the drive shaft in the process. Jim Robertson and Colin Maxwell made it two finishes in a row in their Citroen. The car made it difficult for them when it lost third gear early on. Not the easiest problem to deal with in a sequential gearbox. Only one second up on the red section at the finish, Malcolm Robertson and Katie Stimson had a tricky day with puncture slowing the sunbeam, but still finished fourth in class. 
Third in the class was a good result for Colin Grant, the only problem all day being no intercom in the first stage. A change of battery at service was all that was needed. There was a big battle for the class win. A brief off into a ditch on the second loop may have made the difference for Alec Curran and Heather Grisdale. That delay put them on the back foot, and they finished only eight seconds back from the eventual class winners, Scott Macbeth and David Wilson. Also visiting a ditch on SS4, Macbeth and Wilson took the class lead after the McKnight's retirement and held it all the way to the finish. A good comeback after retiring on the snowman and rebuilding the car in just four weeks. Taking the early Class 6 lead after Steve Bannister punctured a tyre on SS1, Willie Stewart and Neil Ewing were going well in their Mark 1 Escort. That all changed on the second loop when they punctured a tyre on SS5. The car was undamaged, but the time loss was enough to leave them second in class at the finish. On a charge after that Stage 1 puncture, Steve Bannister and Louise Sutherland took a convincing win by over a minute. They weren't able to beat their traditional sparring partner, the unregistered Matthew Robinson, to the top two-wheel drive and historic slot this time out. Finishing second in class on her first SRC round this year, Caroline Carslaw spent all day struggling with brake problems in the Fiesta. Taking his second class win in a row, Ross MacDonald was testing a new gearbox in the Civic Type R. Despite feeling he had a bad day, he managed 29th overall and first in class. How's the day been for you? Yeah, it was really good. Uh, first stage was a bit iffy. We were driver was not at the races but uh, obviously second stage we didn't do but after that we got together and ploughed on and it was really good. So it's two class wins this season, things are going well, what's the plan for the granite? Same again. <laughs> um, I will go there and see if we can push on a wee bit, it'd be nice to keep up with the, the, the top two wheel drive points, that's the aim as well as the class you know, so to prove ourselves against them would be, would be great. So we'll go to the granite and we'll, we'll have a go again. After parking his BMW in a ditch in front of one of our cameras in round one, Donald Brooker managed to stay on the road this time out to grab fourth in class nine at the finish. After a big spin on stage three, Stuart Glendinning managed to grab third in the class at the finish in the unusual way of his drive for Puma. Really enjoying the stages in his completely rebuilt Escort, Gordon Murray and co-driver Dave O'Brien had a very good run to grab second in the class, the first finish in the car after eight attempts. Ken Wood and Irish co-driver Paul Cummins took a solid class win despite major surgery being required on the Triumph's transmission after the diff started leaking oil. Emergency welding at service kept the car going and they took 23rd overall. The only other problem was not arguing over the Scotland-Ireland Six Nations rugby match that was on at the same time. Right four, left two. This is a chicane, maybe. 